Hi guys, or welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, and today we are doing something that I've been wanting to do for a whole moment. If you follow me on socials, which of course you should, it'll be on the screen already by now. I've been asking you guys to give me some questions that you want me to answer, whether it's about myself or just facts, opinions, basically like a Q&A vibe. Um, for the most part, a lot of you have asked them anonymously. So thank you so much because guys, so many of you asked questions and I was like, wow. Like there's a lot to get through, but I'm really, really grateful to those of you who, those of you who reached out to ask a question and I just wanna get into it. If you're new here, my name is Rachel and I feel like you probably don't know me cause you're new here. Fashion and lifestyle content is what I do, but even for those of you who have been around, I feel like I don't really get a chance, apart from like the vlogs here and there, to just talk to you guys and sit down with you and kind of get into it. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing today. You've asked me the questions I'm here to answer, so let's get into it. I um, I had to take like screenshots of all of these just to have them like somewhere in order. Um, and the first question is, are you happy? I mean, damn, okay, we're gonna get into it. I am, if you hear the chair screeching, by the way, change of scenery, guys. I am in Cornwall. Uh, we're gonna get into that in another video anyway. There will be a vlog out, but yeah, hence the different background. If you're new here, you're like, okay. But I'm on a leather chair, so if it squeaks, I promise I did not poot. Anyway, are you happy? And I honestly am. Guys, I know there's so much like to like do and so much to achieve in life, but ultimately I can say I have a level of content that lets me know, yeah, I am happy. So yeah, thank you for asking. I am happy. What do you love about yourself? Aww. Um, quite honestly, your girl has been flourishing. And I say flourishing in a sense, I just feel like I'm coming into my own. Like I am understanding my yeses and my noes. I'm understanding what I like, what I will tolerate. And all of this has been a work in progress, but I just feel like more now than ever, I feel so comfortable and confident in myself. I love my skin. I love my body. Yes, we in the gym trying to get snatched and yes, we can eat better and things like that. But Ultimately, I just feel really, really happy with myself, who I am, the energy I bring to people, like the person I am with people and with myself as well. Um, that's what I'd honestly say I love about myself. And like I said, it's been a work in progress, like therapy, girl, been doing the therapy, doing the hard work, the grafting, and it's been really, really insightful. Everyone knows therapy is not always the most pleasant uh, journey. It's not always something that it's gonna be, you know, happy, happy, happy. But ultimately, it gets you to the position where I feel like I'm in now, where it's like, I just feel really, really content. And honestly, there's no better time than now for me to mention. This is a paid partnership with BetterHelp. They're who I do my therapy sessions with. And honestly, I just feel like I've always been an advocate for it because I feel like my generation at least, and definitely the younger ones, they're already on it. But I feel like my generation, we are that generation that's realizing like the stigmas and the stereotypes of therapy are wrong. Girl, go get healed. Go find peace, go and find joy in life. Like your future self will thank you for it. But yeah, I do my therapy sessions with BetterHelp and I have to say the thing I love the most is honestly the convenience. Your girly is still out here, you know, we're working, we're doing the nine to five. And it's very nice to be able to like, just tailor my session to a time that suits me. It's online. You don't have to worry about having to go somewhere or be somewhere, like be in the comfort of your own home, do your sessions there. And equally the accessibility to my therapist as well, like being able to have a bad day and just message and be like, hey, this happened. And just having that conversation there, doing a video call, a phone call, like whatever you wanna do, whatever you're comfortable with. It's just made life so much easier. It's made it a lot easier to be consistent with therapy as well. And I feel like this is something that those who are in therapy know. There's nothing worse 
than having a therapist that you do not click with. And it's not about them saying yes or, you know, validating what you're doing, but just having that rapport. Because I honestly say, apart from your man, your woman, your parents, siblings, whoever, your best friend, your therapist really be in your business. So you need to have someone that you vibe with. So I will be showing you on screen because if you've never heard of BetterHelp or you've never used them before, you can essentially tailor your therapist to like suit your needs. So for me, like I wanted a woman, you can do like a black woman, a Christian black woman, like you can really do it in a way where it's like, you don't have to explain things and they kind of just understand maybe your upbringing or your lifestyle a lot better. So from a community and like cultural perspective, tailoring it that way just makes it a lot easier. And again, like I said, the convenience, just being able to have those video calls, whether it's gonna be in the evening or in the weekend, like whatever it is. So I've been learning a lot of things about myself, but I really feel like that's what's gotten me to a position where I can feel comfortable about my complexion. And I say that some of you are probably like, huh? Cause you guys are the sweetest. This is what you'll be complimenting me on. But there was a time where I would get picked on for it and I've never hated myself for it, but it's always been like a, huh? Would be nice if it could be a little bit different, but now, baby, you cannot tell me a thing. Having those conversations, those very, very candid and of, or like honest conversations to understand like what are my triggers, why I'm the way I am, it's honestly all through therapy. So I say it, um, very grateful that BetterHelp are supporting this channel, but I also say it just as someone who has done this for a few years now girlies do not play yourself go get some therapy go get some understanding and honestly just watch yourself thrive i will leave all the details below um because i do have a link that you can select as well it'll be on the screen and it'll be in the description box below as well but yeah check it out look into it okay that was kind of a digression that just made me feel like all mushy and gushy and yeah uh, next question is do you pray yes i do I don't know why I have to get all American with it, but yes. Um, yes, I pray. Um, that's how I start my day. That's how I end my day. You have to give thanks and just like have that moment of removing yourself from the world and everything going on in life and just give thanks, pray, start your day, all of that stuff. So yes, I do pray. You wild for what you did. See, now this is the thing with these anonymous questions because you guys be acting brand new. Okay, because you wouldn't have sent that with your name attached. I don't know what they're saying I'm wild for, but we actually move. They said the worst advice you've ever given. Now, if I'm honest, something else my therapist told me is I'm very self-aware. And all jokes aside, I feel like I do give good advice. Like, I know that's me too in my own horn, but seriously, I feel like I give good advice because I'm always thinking, what would I do? And equally, the advice I'm giving them, is this something I can sleep with at night? Like, am I happy with what I've told them? And this can be friends, family, colleagues, like whoever. But I also think like I take into consideration that person. Like, are they more confrontational than me? Do they come from maybe a different background? Like what are, what's their lifestyle? Who are they? And how can I tailor my advice to them a little bit more? Come through therapy. I do think I give good advice. With that being said though, actually no. I would say the worst advice I've probably given is anything that is encouraging retaliation. I know sometimes when people go low, you have to go lower. Like you have to let them know you're mad, I'm madder. However, 95% of the time, it's not worth it. So I feel like any advice maybe where I've told someone to act like mad petty or not violent, mean, I don't know. For me, anytime I've done something where I'm like, ooh, that was a bit mean, I just feel like icky afterwards. So I would say that's the worst advice I may have given. But no one has come back to me, so I mean, I guess it wasn't bad for them, but yeah. How often do you do a closet clear out and closet clear out tips? Oh, good question. So I think I've said on my channel before, I do them every season at least, but I also make sure that I do it like midway as well because like I'm shopping a lot less actually, so I don't really need to do it as often, but midway as well, um, I think is a good way. And closet clear out tips, honestly, Marie Kondo said it best. Does it bring you joy? Does it make you happy? If it doesn't, I just don't feel like it's worth keeping. Like certain items, if you've got in your wardrobe and you look at it and it's already like, oh, this piece, or oh, I don't know what to match with it, or I've just never worn it, then maybe it's time to let it go. Alternatively, maybe you just need to do a bit of research. Jump on Pinterest, jump on Instagram, watch my videos. Like get the inspiration that allows you to maybe like work with that item. Um, yeah, just don't feel, don't feel bad to give things away or let things go. Like if you're not getting enough out of it, then it's all good. 
Another thing I would say is make use of storage. Don't feel like you need to have everything in your wardrobe. Like for me, that clutters my mind. So I would definitely say like make the most of seasonal wardrobes. Like you do not need a chunky knit in the middle of summer in your wardrobe, that sort of thing. I like this question. Have you invested in guidance with your style, e.g. stylist, or has your journey with style been instinctive? Love your fashion content, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, I would say it's been instinctive. Like that's probably the perfect word for it. I haven't invested in any guidance. Um, I was like maybe interested in finding out what my colors are. I know there's like a, a word for it or it's a whole thing now. But for the most part, I've honestly just grown to the point where I'm like, what makes me comfortable? What do I feel my best in? Like I can walk into a store and be like, yeah, that item is for me or mm, that's not my vibe. And that will change with like seasons and age. But for the most part, I think I know what works for me and my body. Yes, I will work with my body as that changes as well, but you guys get the gist. Like, I just have an understanding of what is for me and what isn't, but I'm equally willing to experiment as well, whether it's colors, silhouettes, layering, all of that stuff. So yeah, it's been instinctive and it's been an amazing journey, guys. Like, honestly, it's very freeing to look at my wardrobe and be like, yes, I love pretty much everything here, if not everything here. What keeps you calm? I like that. Um. Honestly, it can be the simple things. It can be that knowing at the end of the day, I can go home and drink some tea and just chill. That gives me peace knowing that my whole day is not gonna be hectic. That keeps me calm. I would say definitely venting, like just offloading, whether it's like journaling, talking to my partner, like just doing something that gets it off my chest, that keeps me calm as well. I also have peace in knowing that things will not always stay as they are. So there's just no point in worrying. There's no point in stressing. I've said therapy already, but honestly, you guys don't realize what it takes for it to click in your head that worrying does nothing for you. You cannot change the inevitable. Otherwise, the word inevitable would not be a word, right? So it's like, mm, just, it is what it is. Go with the flow. Yes, you can feel your emotions. They are valid. But yeah, I just, I, I stay calm through just slowing down sometimes. Just grounding myself and being like, okay, hey, you're in your feelings right now, but it's all good, that sort of thing. And sometimes it's watching my favorite shows, keeps me calm as well. I'm a nostalgic babe. When, when, when did you decide to cut your hair off and what made you want to do it? Girl, I wish I could be like, yes, I found myself and then I realized. Guys, this was during the panoramic and I had like, I'd done like boho, what did I do? Was it like boho twist or faux locks or something as a hairstyle? And baby, when it came to taking it out, I was like, I'm not doing this. And so I just snip, 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 got the clippers, shaved my head off, my hair off. Um, and that was it. It was pure laziness. I would be lying if I said anything else. I just could not be bothered to take my hair out. And low key, I'd kind of wanted to cut my hair. So it was like the perfect time to do it. And honestly, no regrets. I'm so, so happy I did it. Definitely the best decision I've made regarding just my appearance and aesthetic so far. Um, and that's another thing I'm loving. Just like, I feel like I'm coming into my own to understand my looks, you know? We change it up sometimes, but yeah. So laziness is what made me cut it off, literally. How old are you again? I'm 29. Um, I don't think I've ever actually said my age on my channel and it's been for different reasons, but this is another thing I realized. Um, professionally, I'm quite young in what I do. And I just felt like, I don't know, maybe I had like a bit of imposter syndrome, but now I'm realizing, hello, you're 29, you're young, but you're accomplished. You have the skills, you have the capabilities, you occupy the space for a reason. And so I feel like I'm like, yeah, I'm 29, I'm what? Um, no, I'm not a baby, baby girl, but I'm still a baby girl. Uh, but yeah, I'm 29, turning 30 next year and guys, I can't explain the feeling I have of entering the third chapter of life. I'm so excited, like I'm so grateful and just happy. Um, but yeah, total like total digression, but I'm 29. Are you a backseat driver? I'm a passenger princess, yes I am. Although being a passenger princess, I'm a very good one, okay? Like I will give you snacks, I will sort out the music. I'm not, I might do up a little bit of road rage, but not towards you, it's towards the people on the street. Um, but yeah. Can we be besties? Sure. I mean, it's anonymous, so I don't know who you are, 
But yeah, man, we can be friends. I know people find it hard to make friends and I'm like, you just gotta put yourself out there, babes. Talk to people, like, I'm so scatty when it comes to like messaging and replies and stuff, but my friends know what it is. They know I love them. But yeah, like, just put yourself out there. Talk to people, smile. I know the UK, we're bad vibes sometimes, but you gotta put yourself out there. So yeah, we can be besties. Um, what did you eat for breakfast now? My stomach literally just grumbled two seconds ago. So that reminded me I didn't eat breakfast. I had like two biscuits and that's it. I don't know how people be doing up like a whole full English and those sort of things like fruit, porridge, something light, but you know, that will get me through the day is enough for me. So yeah, I didn't eat breakfast today, no. How many hours of sleep did you get last night? Now that is a fantastic question because for the first time in a long time, your girl slept well and long. I think I slept for like eight and a half hours or something crazy like that. But as I said, I'm in Cornwall, so we traveled down last night and I just wanted to have a lie in, so I did. And yeah, like eight and a half, maybe even nine hours of sleep was fantastic. Favorite movie. This makes me feel so nostalgic and just warm inside. Uh, Lion King, for sure. Call me childish, I don't give a eck. That film will make me cry every single time. Cause what do you mean he dies? Um, so yeah, that's definitely a favorite movie. And I really, really love black rom-coms. Like it honestly doesn't matter how like, corny it is but i love a good rom-com um favorite movie what's a movie i could watch again and again it would have to be lion king i'm sure there's actual like an actual movie but we'll say that for now yeah that's the whole vibe my biggest fear so you know we do not operate from a place of fear okay but if we had to say something a bit more like trivial i cockroaches and spiders Cockroaches I've actually had an experience with, so the fear isn't actually irrational, like it's, it's a thing. Um, spiders though, eight legs and eight eyes, you're just doing too much, why? And then you're scuttling along, absolutely not. And they're just getting bigger and bigger every year. So yeah, um, in life I try not to be fearful because you know, but spiders and cockroaches, ooh, ooh. choke hold. Favorite hobby? Um. I like to do puzzles, but I hesitate because I haven't actually done one in a while. Your girl's just been busy. But on top of that, I really love scrapbooking, just making memories in general. That's why doing something like YouTube and just content in general just really makes me happy. Like I love the whole process. I love the taking of the pictures, developing the photos, like all of that stuff. Um, so yeah, I would say hobby wise, I really, really like scrapbooking and like doing albums and things and puzzles as well. Yeah. I do want to get into knitting or like crocheting. Um, so that might be something I try and pick up very soon. Netflix and chill. Pre eyes, pre eyes, pre eyes. Shameless. Do you think birds are real? Pre eyes. I had a pet bird when I was younger. That was real. So, um, no judgment, no judgment, no judgment, no judgment. But yeah, I do think birds are real. Are you traveling anywhere soon? The Nigerian in me sees this and says, why are you asking, what's your own? <laughs> but I am traveling soon, I'm not gonna say where. I never do that, but I just feel like it's a habit I have and I'm actually happy to keep it that way. Like, you'll see guys, you guys will see soon because I will vlog it. Um, but yeah, I am traveling soon. What counts as soon, I'm not sure, but it's happening this year, so yeah. Hey, I was hoping you could do a type of video where you talk about what certain type of bras you wear under certain styles of clothes. I don't think I'll do a whole video, to be honest. Like, I, mm, there's not enough for me to say personally. I know there are other videos out there as well. For the most part, multi-way bra, strapless bra, standard bra, like, you'll be absolutely fine. I do not have the smallest boobs, so I can't actually get away with, like, doing too much. Boob tape, all of that stuff, obviously, if you need to. Um, but yeah, I think those three things, you should be fine. But maybe I'll try and see if I can, like, incorporate it in another video coming up or something. I don't know. Do you love your life? I do. I do. And I love it because I'm grateful. I love it because I acknowledge that yes, there's more to come and there's bigger and better to come as well. But so far, I'm content. Like, it's, thanks, thanks God. It's been good. Um, so yeah, I do love my life. Thank you. Who do you text the most? 
my man, my man, my man. Hold tight that man, like, I'm sure he's just like, baby. But what can I say? Any little thing that happens, be like, babe, babe. So yeah, my man, for sure. Um, apart from that, maybe my, m no, my sister would be the next person. My man or my sister, for sure. Do you have any exes? What's that? Are you a backseat driver? I've asked that already. Tell me a random fact. <sighs> Did you know in the English dictionary, almost is the longest word that has consecutive letters? It's the longest English word where the letters are consecutive, like they're in order of the alphabet. Shout out to my wife and kids. If you know, you know. I think that's still correct, by the way, but yeah, correct me if I'm wrong. Spill some tea on your best friends. Now, sir, ma'am, you must not have friends. You can't have friends. You can't have friends if you're asking me to, if you're asking such a question. No, we do not do those things. And if you do do those things, stop doing those things. Shameless or bastic side eye. What's in your Spotify top songs? Let's see. Is there a way to do that actually? Like playlist wise? Cause I know it does it for like annually. Like last year, Chloe, treat me like you treat me. And you know I do it right. That was in my top song. Um, Love Me Back by Trinidad Cordona, um, Industry Baby, me and that song in the gym. I've had a few songs on repeat, but we'll come back to that. You have to follow me on Instagram. When it comes to the end of the year, you will see all my top songs. Um, but no, good question though. Favorite show right now? I am not a series girly. I can't even lie. Like I really find it hard to like stick to series. Like I just get bored. If you're anything more than like 30, 40 minutes, you're doing too much and I cannot keep up. Um, I would say of all time, like Grey's Anatomy had my whole heart, but your girl was crying every other episode. So we have to stop that right there. Um, I definitely love watching reruns of things like that's my bag right there. I recently wa finished watching uh, Survival of the Thickest. That was really good. Um, but yeah, I'm not really watching anything right now. My favorite book. Mm. The book I read this year that stuck out to me was called The Will. I need to remember who wrote that book. That book, yeah. That book by Rebecca Reed. Scandalous. It depends what you're looking for. It's not so much a thriller. It's more of like a, uh, what's that word? Um, there is mystery to it, but it's not a thriller. But yeah, no, that book is scandalous. Um, I was looking for all my books that I finished this year, but um, I've read Queenie this year as well. Uh, in five years, I do love a cheeky rom-com, my gosh. And I'm currently reading The Marriage Act by John Mars. That book, it's messing with me, Ed. What's your biggest insecurity? Um, B. Um, my biggest insecurity, honestly, is not one that comes to mind. There's nothing that comes to mind. And to be honest, you can't be given the internet ammo. Like this is Beyonce's internet. Once it's on the internet, it's there. But I would say in the past, it definitely was my skin as I've touched on already. Like it's something that I used to get picked on for. And I feel like it became a whole trend in itself. But besides all of that, I've just come to love me, love my complexion, love my skin tone, all of that stuff. Like you literally cannot tell me nothing. Self-confidence, maybe it's even too high because like I just, you honestly can't tell me nothing. Hey Rachel, do you want kids? Now, I was gonna give you side eye because it's a little bit intrusive, a little bit invasive. Um, it's 2023 babes. I don't think we were asking such questions, um, but oh my God. Yes, I do want kids. Fave hobby, I've answered already. Are you happy? I think I've answered that, but if I haven't, yes, I am. I am happy, thank you. Who is your worst enemy? That would be the devil, because the devil is a liar. Your celeb crush. We had a conversation about this at brunch not too long ago, and I was just like, I don't, because we're talking about the whole Kiki Palmer Usher situation. Sure. But I was saying, I don't think I have a celeb crush. I was watching that film on Netflix with Gabrielle Union and the younger guy. I was like, oh, he handsome. 
but not a crush. Like, yeah, I don't have a celeb crush. Sorry to be boring, but it's honestly just true. I really don't. What did you dream about last night? I was conked out. Your girly, if she dreamt, I do not remember. So again, apologies, yeah. I don't know what I dreamt about last night. I'm always here for you, English. I'm always here for you if you need anything. Again, baby, this is anonymous. Thank you. It's funny because there's a few people that come to mind that could have sent this, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Are you talking to anyone? Um, we ain't talking. We lacked in, honey. Um, yeah, I'm very much taken. I haven't been on the market for a while. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're talking because he likes me and I like him. What are you doing? Um, recording this. See, the streets are cold because these are the sort of questions the girlies are getting asked. Not even what are you doing? W-Y-D? Question mark? Child, the ghetto. What do you love about yourself? I have answered. Um, I've had a crush on you for years and you still don't know, laugh my ass off. Maybe you finna have a crush for more years cause I can't help you. Um, sorry to that man. I do not know that man. But yeah, um, thanks I guess. That's very sweet, I think. What's your fave drink? Now, let's get into it. Cause I do love a bubble tea. I love a passion fruit bubble tea with the coconut pieces and the popping boba. Um, I love pineapple and coconut juice. I love coconut water. Coconut is a theme if you couldn't tell. I love a cheeky mojito or a spicy margs. Oh, I also love a chai. Like a cappuccino babes. What's, we need a speck. But yeah, there's a few drinks I like, but if I had to pick one that I could drink consistently, it would definitely be coconut water with the bits. Or oh, aloe vera juice? Okay, that's enough. How do you deal with relationships with men? What have you learned so far from your experience? Honey, we out here all trying to learn and just take things away. Um, do you know what actually, what I would say to my younger self, what I would say to any of the girlies, what I would say again and again and again, if he wanted to sis, he absolutely would. It's not that I never got that, but until I got it, and experienced it, I was like, oh baby. Men are very simple in that sense. Like, apart from the side-eye villainous just spawns of, you know, the devil, apart from those ones that roam the streets, men very much like, they say what they mean and it is what it is. Like, they're very plain. Like, we're not trying to read between the lines. You know, women are a lot more complex and that is very much generalizing, but I feel like the girlies understand we're very complex. And for me, I've really come to understand, babes, if you're blue in the face from telling this guy again and again and again and again what you need him to do and he's not listening, honey baby, that man hates you, okay? Free yourself because it shouldn't take more than once essentially to tell them something for them to listen. And I'm not saying it like, you must do this. But if you're expressing yourself, then it should be received. That's just my opinion. So yeah, babes, I would I would definitely say that's something I've learned. Um, what's your fave brand? I'm gonna approach this from a fashion perspective. I would definitely say I really, really love Cos recently. I've done some calls on my channel which I've spoken about this. Um, I just feel like they have beautiful sort of like silhouettes and just core pieces and the quality. I can't not mention Zara because girl, I'd be doing way too many hauls in Zara not to mention them, but I would say cause if we're going luxury, I really love Caperni. Like I love their accessories. Um, I would say, but not Bottega, oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. There is another luxury bra. Okay, I just can't speak all together. There is another luxury brand that I really, really love because they have great silhouettes. Um, and it begins with a B. And I don't know why I can't. No, it doesn't. It does not. I'm thinking Jacquemus. <laughs> Lord. Jacquemus is another one. I really love their silhouette. Like, obviously, you cannot afford them. <laughs> not on a daily, that's for sure. But yeah, I really, really love the pieces that they come out with. There are a few others, I'll probably put them on the screen or down below, but yeah, good question, because that took all my brain power. My worst habit is one that I know, because you know, self-awareness, um, is what I call active procrastination. I do things knowing that there's something I need to do first, but I don't want to do that thing, so I do other things on my to-do list, and that's my way of basically being productive. Um, I don't know if there's another term for it or an actual phrase, but I would say that is definitely my worst habit. You're really attractive. Thank you. That is very sweet. 
Did you watch Game of Thrones? Now, whoever asked this, I don't know what sort of war you're trying to start on my channel, but no, I didn't. Um, I literally watched season one and from when they off Ned, I said, oh, is that what we're doing? Absolutely not. So no, I didn't watch Game of Thrones. Um, biggest red flags. Ooh, I like this one. I would say one, and I feel like it would be easy to be like, oh, men. This is for me in general. I think people who are inconsiderate, that's a major, major red flag for me. Um, because it just, I think it's not just the selfishness of it all, it's just the lack of awareness or understanding of how you might affect a person or the people around you. If I did have to think from a romantic perspective or like speaking about men, um, I would say liars, that's general actually, but someone who just feels the need to lie is very, very strange to me. Um, someone who's very, very guarded is a red flag, especially with their phone. I hate to be the girly that says it, but it's true. Um, those sort of things just, yeah, they always really throw me off. And I just think just a lack of openness as for the most part, but yeah, lying, um, being inconsiderate and inconsistent as well. Inconsistency. Like if you're going to be bad, be bad. Cause I can do bad all by myself. Um, I've answered that one. Please give me, oh, this is the last one. Please give me pickup lines that always work. Now, I would say, babe, it's not about the line, it's the energy. I love giving compliments. Um, I'm a words of affirmation girly, so not a surprise there, but I always think it's just nice to give people compliments, randomly, of course. So say that to say, it's the energy you come with. Let's say you're approaching someone, it could just be a, Hey, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to come over because I walked past you and you smell amazing. I'm a fragrance girl, if you couldn't tell. You smell amazing. I just wanted to ask what that is. Use it as a segue. Keep it natural, keep it sweet. A compliment is a nice way to get them to warm up to you. You're making them feel good about themselves. You're letting it be known that, yeah, I, I have the energy and the pizzazz to come and approach you and compliment you. Like, it's a level of confidence, I think, that comes with it. So that's what I would say. I don't have a, like a pickup line in general, but I would say complimenting someone or the person you want to talk to and don't lie, okay? Find something you actually like that you've seen on them or about them um, and use that as like a nice little segue to just, you know, cause that way, if you do approach them and you say something like that and they're kind of like, oh, okay, thanks. Then it's like, Ooh. <laughs> off I go. I hope that helps. All right, my loves, those are all the amazing questions you have given me. Thank you again, honestly, to those of you who asked. I felt like the anonymous thing had you guys feeling like you could comfortably ask me questions, which is hilarious, but I'm happy to do it again. If you want more of like a dilemma situation, let's do that, because I think that would be fun too. So leave a comment below if you do want me to do something like that. I will send out another link for you guys to send me more anonymous posts, because I think that could be really, really fun. If you have made it to the end of the video, since I'm in Cornwall, I would say leave a bird emoji in the comment section. That also ties in with a person asking me if birds are real, but you know, here we are, because you might be able to hear the seagulls. So yeah, leave a bird emoji in the comment section. Again, thank you to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. I honestly appreciate you guys. The link was already on the screen. I'll put it again on the screen now and it will be in the description box below. So be sure to check it out. And like I said, love on yourself and give yourself the tools and the ability to be better, yeah? Like, get into it, guys. But yeah, I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, my loves. Sunday, 7 p.m. is the next one, as always. But until then, stay well, stay blessed, good vibes only, and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.